Okay, I'm going to try to keep this one shorter than yesterday's, but um, we'll see where it ends up. Uh, we're going to cover another pre-algebra review. Uh, this one we use a lot in our geometry and algebra classes. So this one, we want to make sure that uh, we are clear on what we combine. And so uh, I want to make sure I lay the foundation here of, of what we're going to be working with here to review this, this um, combining like terms. Now, first off, combining like terms, let's break that down. We are talking about when we are adding and subtracting, multiplying, all those things. Terms that, because now in math we have letters and numbers, which ones go together? Which ones can you combine? Which ones can you add together? Uh, which ones can you work with in the operations? Okay, so uh, first thing I put under there, same variable, and then I also put it has to be the same exponent. But let's break down the same variable first. Variable is just another math term we use for letters, okay? Those are the letters that we use in math, whether it be X or Y or A and B. You know, those are used a lot, but you could use any letter. We do avoid some letters uh, for variables, although you don't have to. But as math teachers, there's some letters that mean other things, so we try to avoid them. Um, for example, like I, the letter I we avoid usually as a variable. You don't have to, but um, it usually stands for imaginary numbers when you get into higher math. So there's a few letters we try to avoid, but X, Y, A, B, those are used a lot. So let's take an example of A and B, okay? So can I just combine A and B and add them together and get AB. So can I just put them together and get AB? Is that what we can do? Well, no, we can't. Okay, we can't just put them together and get AB. I use a silly example when I'm in class sometimes for this because um, it's just a way to kind of remember one of the rules of that, that you can't just combine those, is let's say I'm buying an apple and a banana. Can I just put them together and get like a banapple or something or a banana? Is that how it's, yeah. There's, there's no fruit of that, so I can't just walk in and combine them and put them together like that. Um, Multiplication is different, and we're gonna do that, but if I'm just walking into the store, let's say I'm going to buy them an apple and a banana, and I walk up, they're gonna ring them up separate. Apple's gonna have its own price, banana's gonna have its own price, and so I can't just say, can you combine these two, and me just buy them together, okay? They keep them separate. So that's what it's meaning by they have to be the same variable. They have to be the same letter. Okay, now, if I'm walking up to buy two bananas, okay, and I have a banana and a banana, and I, and I walk up to buy that, and I, you know, put them on the cash register, they can ring those up as two bananas. They can, it's the same price for each one, um, and so you can just combine those two. They would not ring one up and then ring another. Now, I know to get, in my silly explanation here, you, you weigh them when you pay for them, but still, it's one of those things where you are paying the same price for both, they can combine them. And how we do that, we use the coefficient, okay, coefficient's another math term that we, uh, and this is gonna test my spelling again, coefficient. I, I have it for you, except after C, but I think it's, um, I have to check that. This is gonna drive me nuts if I don't, so. Do a quick check. Uh, you're seeing behind the scenes here. I can edit this out, which I won't because it's kind of funny to see me try to spell coefficient. Yeah, spelled it right. So that, see, that's where English always got me because it's I before E except after C, but in this case it is I before E. So coefficient, uh, what that is, is it's the number before a variable or, or before something. Um, so in this case, if I'm saying two bananas, I can write that as 2B. Um, or not 2B, no, sorry, that was an English joke. But B plus B, you have 2B, okay? Like if I did B plus B plus B, so I walked up to buy three bananas, that'd be 3B, okay? You can combine those to get 3B. And just a reminder, too, of, of pre algebra is if there's no coefficient here, like a four or a two or a seven, then it is one, okay? There's an imaginary one there. We don't write one B because if I, if I, and how I explain that is if I 
had a student come in and say, how many bees are up there? If I covered all this up and say, how many bees are there? Uh, they'd say, well, there's one bee. Okay, so that's why we don't, it's just because there's a bee there, we don't need a coefficient, there's one bee. So that's why there's one bee, one bee, and that adds up to two bee. Okay, you can add those coefficients. Let's say we did, um, staying with bananas, let's say I had three bananas, and then I was like, you know what, I, I need some more, I have guests coming over, they like bananas, so I buy two bananas more. So when I go to pay, I have three bananas and then the two, they can add those coefficients to make them five bananas, okay? And that's all you're doing is adding the coefficients to combine those. And the only reason you can do that is because they're the same letter. If I said I had three bananas and two apples and I wanted to combine them and add them together, you can't add those together. They're different letters, so I can't just say 5AB. Okay, that's, that would not be what that is because there is no apple banana. Now multiplication, that changes because multiplication, we're not talking about combining anymore as far as adding them, but we, we can't add them, okay? So, and that's with any letters, then just have to be A and B. If I've got 4C plus 3D, cannot add those together, okay? So, there are two separate things. So, I cannot combine them by adding them. Now, if it was 4C plus 3C, and they're the same letter, same variable, then I can say I have seven Cs, okay? I'm just adding the... Uh, coefficients. And that goes with negative numbers as well. So let's say I have negative 3x minus 5 more x. Okay, and so I'm combining negative 3 and negative 5, which, you know, this, this is the part I'm not going to necessarily be reviewing. Hopefully your integers are strong. If you need to go back and watch some extra videos on integers, what I'm talking about is positive and negative numbers. You may need to do that. We're not going to spend class time for this class to do that um, because that's mainly uh, should be covered in your pre-algebra. But if you're negative 3x and you're subtracting another 5x, you have now negative 8x. Okay? So you had negative 3 of them. You had negative 5 more. You're going 5 more down on the number line, so you're at negative 8x. But if this is a y then I cannot combine those. X is a different letter than Y. Okay, so they have to be the same variable. So that's what that is. You can combine them based on if they're variables or not. So I'll give you a couple examples and do them real quick so that you can see what I'm talking about. So uh, here's a couple problems. I'm going to do 7X plus 3Y plus 4X uh, minus 2Y. Okay, and then I'm going to do... Uh, 3a uh, minus 4a plus 2a plus 3a minus 4b. Okay? So, you know, no matter how long the problem goes, you can only combine the ones that have the same letters. Okay? So, what I like to do, now this is me personally, you don't have to do this, but I, I'm speaking of shopping and buying apples and bananas. I'm the worst at, let's say my list is to go buy bananas. I will go into Walmart or wherever I'm shopping and buy everything but bananas, walk out, get about halfway home and go, I went to the store just to buy bananas and I ended up with everything else but bananas. So I have to like, you know, that's why I make phone lists and stuff to make sure I know what I'm doing. So when I do problems like this, if I start trying to remember which ones I've used, I forget. So I, I cross them off once I use them. So like, let's say I'm starting with X and I want to combine all the ones with X in here. I say, okay, I can't combine the Y, but I can combine the 7X plus 4X. So 7X plus 4X is 11X and I, I cross them off. So then I know that I use those two and not to reuse them or forget that I used them or anything like that. So 7X plus 4X. Then I look and say, okay, I can combine the Y's. Okay, they're the same uh, letter, so I can combine those. So 3Y minus 2Y. So if I had three yo-yos and I took away two yo-yos, I only have one yo-yo, and I'm not going to write one Y because I don't need the one. 
and it's positive because 3 minus 2 is still positive 1, so it's plus 1y, okay? And this is where I see, you know, if hopefully you've done that. Like I said, pre-algebra covers this. I'm reviewing it, but uh, this is where I see the most common mistake is they'll do that step right. A lot of students will do that step right, and then they'll want to combine those two and give me like 11xy or 12xy or something like that. This is where the problem is. You cannot combine those two things. And I know it looks weird because it looks like you need them, you know, uh, all one thing. But no, if you can't combine them, you leave it like that. Okay, that's where you leave it. 11x plus y is your answer there. So let's do this one. Lots of a's, so I'm going to combine all my a's. 3a minus 4a is, so 3 minus 4 is negative 1. So it's negative 1a, which I don't write the 1. Now, I'm not going to count you wrong if you have a 1 there. You're not wrong. It's just a good practice to get used to that we don't write a 1. Because, like, once again, if I ask a student to come in and say, how many a's are up there? Well, there's just 1. So we already know there's 1. We don't need that 1 there. So 3a minus 4 is negative a. Okay, and I've used these two, so I'm going to move on. And I'm, usually when I do these by myself, I will do them all in one step, but I'm trying to show you step by step, and it's probably good practice until you get a really good hang of it. Like, I don't mind if you skip steps if you're getting them right. Uh, if you're getting them wrong because of that, then I want you to go step by step. So I did that one first, okay, and then just copied down the rest. And then I look and say, okay, negative A plus 2A. So I have negative 1 plus 2, which is a positive 1a. So I'm not going to put that negative anymore. I'm not going to put the 1. So it's negative a plus 2a is 1a. Okay, and I just copy everything else down, and I use these two. Okay, so now I'm all left with here. And a plus 3a is 4a. Okay, so 1 plus 3 is 4a. And now I have 4a minus 4b. Can I do that? Can I combine them? No. It'd be like if I say four apples and take away four bananas, I still have four apples and I'm still going to be taking away four bananas, but I don't have any bananas to take them away from this number. So I leave it as 4a minus 4b. Okay. Now if I had done that all in one step, which just so you see what I'm talking about, and I may do that as we go on, uh, but I still cross them off so that I know that I've used them, but I just, here's the same problem right here, and I just go three minus four is negative one. Negative one plus two is positive one. Positive one plus three is four A. And you can do it all in one step. That's okay if, if you can keep track of that. I still cross them off for myself to know that I use them, but you still get the same answer, okay? So that is talking about combining the same variable. It's gotta be the same letter. What happens if it's got a different exponent, okay? So here's what this is talking about. Let's say I have 3x plus 2x squared, okay? Now, first off, for them to be a like term, they have to have the same variable and they have to have the same exponent. So I look at this and I said, well, it's the same letter. x is the same letter, but they have different exponents. This one has an exponent of 2. This one, although it's not written, it does have an exponent of 1. It's kind of like that coefficient. We don't have to write the 1 because it's anything. It's, like if I say 2, the letter 2, it's 2 to the power of 1. Okay, it's an invisible 1 that we don't need. Obviously, it's to the power of 1 because it's just a 2 there. Okay, so same thing with letters. If I just have a letter like Y, it's automatically to the power of 1. Until you change that, it's to the power of 1. It's, you don't have to write it. It's there. There's a lot of things you don't have to write if you just see a, like a letter or a number up there. Like if I come in and I ask a student, what number is this? They would say 5. They wouldn't say it's a positive 5, but it is a positive 5. We don't have the plus sign there. But if that letter does not have, or number have a negative sign, then if it's not there, it's automatically positive. So there's a lot of things we don't write. Uh, fractions, which don't freak out. You know, I know everybody loves fractions. I always joke that fractions are not clowns. 
Uh, they're not truly scary, but it seems that way. But if you've got a five there, it could be turned into a fraction at any time. It's five over one, okay? Uh, you've got an invisible decimal there, okay? If I said some, how many, let's say I'm talking about money, how much money do I have? Well, I have $5. Well, there's a decimal there, we just don't write it, okay? That's same thing, same value. So there's an invisible decimal there. So, you know, that's where I was saying there's lots of invisible things that we just assume because they're to the first power or to the decimal or the fraction. So anything written without an exponent is to the first power. So this one's to the first power. This one's to the second power, which means they have different exponents, which means I cannot combine them. Now, multiplication, that changes. But as far as addition and subtraction, I cannot combine those terms. I have to leave it like that. Even though they have the same letter, I can't combine them. Now let's say they do have the same letter and exponent. So let's do 4y to the third plus 3. Well, let's change that because that's going to be, let's do uh, 5y to the third. Okay? So 4y to the third plus 5y to the third. So I look and I say, now we're not talking about the coefficients are always going to be different. They're always going to be like six or five, negative two. You know, that, that's what you're combining is those coefficients. That doesn't matter if they're different. It's, does it have the same letter? Does it have the same exponent? It has the same letter. It has the same exponent. So that means we're going to combine them. And this is where, it, this is where a lot of confusion comes in. And I get it because there's several rules. And so it's like, which rule goes with what, especially if you're learning it again, kind of at the beginning of it. But the best thing to remember is like, why, why cubed becomes a thing. Like I'm holding four of these Y cubes in my hand. That's the best way I can describe it. So I've got a Y cube, a Y cube, a Y cube, a Y cube. I'm holding four of them in my hand. And I want to put five more of those in my hand, five more of those Y cubes in my hand. So how many, if, if I said, here's four Y cubes, you know, let's say they're like a, like a token or something. You, you've got them in your hand, a, a coin or something. Here's four Y cubes. I'm going to give you five more Y cubes. How many Y cubes would you have? Well, you would have nine of them. Okay. Where I see confusion is people want to like add the exponents or multiply the exponent, do some, you don't, you're not doing anything. When you're adding and subtracting, you're not doing anything with the exponents. That's only on multiplication and division. Okay, you are only adding those together. Okay, so that's where you're saying, okay, four of those with five of those gives me nine of those. Okay, so that would be, let's do thing that you can kind of compare the two and say, okay, let's say 7x plus 4y squared plus 2y plus 3y squared. Okay, and let's say I got to add all these. And let's, I'm sorry if you're copying and I change this, but I want to throw in a subtraction just to, um, let's do, um, <laughs> You're really going to be mad. So let's just start this one over. Because I want to show you with a... Um, that's got subtraction and then also, you know, has it to where you have a coefficient still. So here, here's our problem now that we've edited that. 7x plus 5y squared plus 2y minus 3y squared. So I gotta go through and see which one are like terms and which can I combine. I have both addition and subtraction, so I can combine if they are the same variable and the same exponent. First off, the best way for me to do it is go each one at a time and say, okay, is there any other like term? Is there any other X, just plain X up there? Okay, there's not. So that's not gonna change, okay? And if you wanna cross it off, you can. I've used it. There's no other X. Then I say, okay, is there any other y squared up there? And there is, okay? This is not a y squared. It's just a y. It's y to the first power. So I say, okay, I can combine these two things. And this is where the signs matter, and this is why I want to throw in a subtraction. 
If I have 5y squared and I take away, I subtract 3 of them, I am left with positive 2y of them. Okay, I had 5 positive, I took away 3, I still have a positive 2y squared. And the reason why I need to put that plus sign to show the positive, if there's no sign there, then it looks like you've combined those two. Uh, you've put them together, you're missing a sign. So that's why I put that there's positive 2y squared. So 7x plus 2y squared, I use these two things. Then I look and say, is there anything other than, is there any other y? And there's not, so this y does not change. Once again, I need the plus sign, because you can't just have it combined there. Okay, so now I look and say, I check again, is there any other, is there any other like terms? Nope, that's a single x. As far as no, one exponent of one, that's a y squared, and that's a y. So that is where my problem ends, right there. That's the answer. Okay, it doesn't matter what order these are in. Uh, some do ascending and descending. It, it really doesn't matter um, because I could switch them all up, and it's the same answer. Like if I say 2y squared plus 2y plus 7x, that's the same answer as that. They're all positive. They're all still there, they're all the same, doesn't matter. What you have to be careful with is the signs. You know, make sure that if that's a positive, that stays a positive. Do you notice I put the positive in front of that one because it needs that sign there, it's a positive, okay? So that's the only thing that, that matters. Um, let's look at, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a couple more examples and hopefully I write them right the first time. So let's do 3x minus 5y minus uh, 5x plus 10y squared. Okay, and then let me do um, 3a plus 5a squared plus 7b squared plus uh, 2b squared minus 5a. Okay, so let's do these two problems and then you can kind of see I've mixed in plus and minuses. I've mixed in exponents. Um, so, you know, that's that's kind of covers it all. So let's look at this one first. So I look and say, is there any other x up here? There is. So I got 3x minus 5x. So I have 3 positive minus 5. That puts me at negative 2. And don't forget your x. You can't doesn't get rid of the x. It's still there. So I had 3 of them. I subtract 5 of them. I have negative 2 of them. Okay. Then I say negative 5y. Is there any other y? There is not. There's a y squared, there's not another y. And I need to keep it negative though. That's why I'm talking about keeping those signs the way they are. And then I have just the 10y squared. Okay, so I just, there's no other 10y squared, so I've used that. Then I look and check, is, make sure there's no other like terms. There's not, there's an x, there's a y, there's a y squared. So that is the end of my answer. Now, like I said, those can be in any order, just keep the signs the same. So let's say you had wrote 10y squared minus 2x minus 5y, that's fine. As long as that 10y squared is still positive, which it is, it's at the beginning, so I don't need the plus sign there. And the negative 2x is still negative, and the negative 5y is still negative, then it's fine. Okay, that's the same answer as this answer, just different order. Okay. Now let's check this one. Okay, first off, 3a, is there any other a? Yes, right here. 3a minus 5a is negative 2a. Okay. Then I check, is there any other a squared? There's a b squared, so it's got to have the same letter and same exponent. So there's no other a squared. So I just copy that down. And then there's a 7b squared and a 2b squared, so I can combine those two. I'm adding them, so I've got 9b squared. OK, 
okay? I use those two. And then I look and make sure there's nothing else I can combine. There's not. So that is my answer. All right. So that, that kind of gives you uh, what you're looking for, same variable, same exponent. You can combine those if they've got those two same things. So let me give you some practice problems. Let's do 7x plus 5x minus 3x. Uh, 3y minus 5y. Um, 2a plus 4b minus 3b plus 7a. Put in some exponents, 7x squared minus 2x plus 3y plus 5x squared. Uh, let's see. Let's do 4c cubed plus 2c squared plus 5c cubed minus 3c squared. 5d minus 3c squared plus uh, 4d minus 3d. Um, 2x plus 7y squared plus 2x squared plus 4x squared minus 8y squared. And last one, 2y plus 3y cubed plus 2y squared minus 3y uh, minus y squared. And remember that's a 1y squared. Okay, so those eight problems, go through, combine the ones you can, circle your answer. That helps me see which one you're kind of finalized, especially if you've got more than one step. You're circling your answer to show this is my final submission. This is the one that I'm saying I'm done with, okay? And we'll check those and go from there, okay?